three and six are always um, opposite of one another. Um, three and six will always be one or the other. Um, let's go to the binary code and add polarity to that. Okay, in other words, so we're going to go back to our 124875 code. Right. Okay. Um, what do you mean by adding polarity to it? Well, I think the, at, before we took the brief pause, um, you asked me to come back and explain the hologram aspect right, of, of the, the binary code. Right, right, right. Okay. It turns out that when they use the binary code today, they do not add any polarity to it. Nothing's negative, nothing's positive. It's just a, it has no dimension. Right, it's just this ongoing... Linear flip-flop on-off. Right, right, right. Okay. What I'm able to do is I'm able to add polarity to the binary code, such as beginning with one, that'll be positive, two will be negative, four will be positive, and it never breaks the binary flip-flop rhythm. All right. So um, eight will be negative, et cetera. So what happens is, is, is um, working with my colleagues, we were able to determine what we refer to as a binary triplet. Instead of it being binary, instead of it always being positive, negative, positive, negative, it breaks down that you always have, if it starts with a positive, you have a negative in the center, another positive, it will always be based with a third element in the center. So it'll be two positives with a negative in the center or two negatives with a positive in the center. We call hmm. it a binary triplet. Ah, yeah, okay, all right. And, then, and, then whichever, and whichever the dominant one is, then that gives it the actual charge or whatever. So if you have two positives and a negative, that, that one has a positive charge. The, the one in the center is always the source of control. Right, okay, I'm with um, you. But the point being is, is then with polarity, we're able to look at it in the form of a toroid, 3D, with the higher dimensional flux field spaces as well in between them, which is the 396693, we're able to create, create it as a dimensional object, as a ge- geometric solid, as a coil. And I'm able to, um, because while everything looks as if it's a duality, positive and negative, it isn't. It's an optical illusion. It, you always have the source of polarity is always in the center. You always have a cause. So I'm going to make a, a postulate here, put myself out there on the line. The classic saying is for every action, there's equal opposite reaction. Completely false. Hmm. For every action, you have two instantaneous, instantaneous opposite reactions. In other words, it's, um, it's like the binary tree ladder. What they do is you have one and then they're not counting in the source in the center, the control. Yeah, you know, and I, I sort of see it on a personal basis, too, where you have sort of both uh, positive and negative results coming from any action. You know, I mean, I mean, the physical things that you do, in other words, you know, if you're nice to somebody. Well... You know, you can have good and bad things come from everything that you do. If uh, everything was a duality, you would have... Um, you wouldn't have... You'd have... Um, you'd have... Uh, What's it called? Hemostasis. You wouldn't have motion. Ah, yeah, the ho- homeostasis. But instead, have, yeah. instead, because everything's based on trinary. Mm. It, That's it, why you have everything motion. ratchets. Mm. Everything only has a one-way positive systemic flow, which is forward. Everything is, um, you know, forced to move forward. Right, right. And this this work explains why. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the geometry that all of this stuff implies. And, and we're gonna, I, I want to ask you about what I guess is a key, or one of the keys to this is this thing that we're calling, uh, or that you title, underlying nested vortices. Correct. So let's talk about this because th- this becomes now, we're bringing it into the real world when we start to develop uh, technology around this stuff. These vortices... Uh, become a key to the whole thing. So why don't you talk a little bit about the coil and uh, what underlying nested vortices are. Okay. Um, with the, the, the toroid, with the rodent coil as a, as a um, coil to produce energy, in between the, du- the two doubling circuits, because it's a bifilier, it's a, it's a double 
uh, wound coil. And again, I want to clarify the two doubling circuits that Marco is talking about are these two sequences. The first doubling circuit is one two four eight seven five one, and the other one is the polarized. Same sequence, but in reverse opposite opposite polarity as well. Right. Okay. All right. Go on. Um. Without trying to explain it, uh, the one point to clarify, without explaining it too deeply, everybody missed that in the binary code, it makes an undulating in reverse direction binary doubling code. This is, that's why this work is complete. Um, but I, I won't try and explain it, but it's very beautiful when you see how things, as it creates motion in one direction, the opposite direction also has literally a mirror motion. <laughs> but anyway, that's why this pattern creates... See, the, when I first discovered this symbol, which we refer to as the mathematical fingerprint of God, I knew I was into something profound because the right and left was a perfect mirror. It was exhibiting bilateral symmetry. Which just, is like the hum, just like the human hand. That's right. Amazing. Based on an axis. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just like our eyes line up horizontally. Oh, yeah. Everything is based on, in our world of physical creation on, on polarization, horizontal polarization. Sometimes we can see it in the stratification of things. Or that even the universe is said to be a, a disc, uh, our galaxy is said to be a sheet. Right, right. So I knew instantly I was looking at an energy that on this symbol, although it was invisible, that was creating this mirroring. Because you don't have parity by accident. You don't have mere symmetry by accident. Um, and forgive me, you've asked me to discuss the geometry of the manufacture of the coil. But before I do, since you did bring up the topic of the mathematics, and since we're now on the topic of mirroring, I want to complete.